Theodore Danchu and I'm leading the development team of the Jasper Reports I.O. project at TIPCO. In this video, I'm going to make a short introduction to the Jasper Reports I.O. professional edition and go through some basic configuration that will help you getting started with the product. We'll first take a look at the installation package and what it contains. We'll then look at some of the most common configurations you will need to make in order to tailor the service to your needs. And we're going to take a look at the demo application and some of the reports that come with it. We provide distributions of Jasper Reports I.O. for the various operating systems, including a distribution for Windows, for Linux, and for Mac. In this particular case, I have the distribution for, for Mac OS X, and they all are coming in the form of a zip that needs to be extracted on the target machine. Let's do that. Once extracted, let's see what we find in the zip. Of course, we ship some documentation in a form of a user guide that will be very helpful to understand the product and how to work with it. Jasper Reports IO is a Java web application. So we ship the Java virtual machine so that you have everything you need inside the zip and not need to install anything on your own. We run this web application using the Jetty web server, so we ship Jetty as well. The web application is found in the GRIO folder, and if we expand it, we can go to the web apps folder where we can find the GRIO folder with the Jasper Reports IO Professional Edition version. Jasper Reports IO is a reporting and data visualization service which exposes a REST API and doesn't have a UI of its own. When working with Jasper Reports IO, you are making REST calls to our web application by providing parameter data and then you capture the output by, by reading the response received after that particular request. So there's no UI to the web application for Jasper Reports IO. However, for the sake of making it easier for people to get started with the product, we ship a demo application which is found in the GRIO docs folder and we're going to take a look at it later during this video. Also, in addition to the REST API that exposes the reporting and data visualization functionality of the service, we also have a JavaScript API and this enables you to embed reports into your web applications by preserving their interactivity. This, is, this JavaScript API is isolated into the separate web application called JRIO Client. And when you'll need to embed this JavaScript API into your own web application, you can copy it from here. Jasper Reports IO is a reporting and data visualization engine based on the Java, Jasper Reports Java library which for many years has been embedded into Java applications for leveraging its reporting and data visualization capabilities. With Jasper Reports IO, we basically provide a REST API on top of the existing Jasper Reports Java API. Jasper Reports works with report templates in form of JRXML files, and these are supposed to be placed inside a repository. With Jasper Reports IO, the repository for report templates and the resources needed by all these reports, like images, data connections, fonts, resource bundles, they are all placed in a file-based repository. By default, we ship the product with a repository folder inside the distribution itself. Through configuration, we can point to additional repositories that can be either file-based system or can be in the cloud. The service can be started with the start script that is in the root folder of the package and can be stopped using the stop script. Let's take a quick look at the start script and see what configurations are available in there. I'm opening it with a simple text editor. The first thing we see 
is that we can configure the amount of memory that we allow the Java Virtual Machine to use. By default, we allow the Java Virtual Machine to use up to half a gigabyte of RAM. But you can give the Virtual Machine more memory for better performance. The 512 megabytes is our recommended, recommended minimum amount of memory. The other setting is for the amount of memory that the virtual machine allocates at startup. These two values can usually be the same for best performance. Another setting that is available in the start script is the port on which the reporting service is running. By default, we run on port 8080, but if this port is taken by some other service on your machine, you can change, change it to another port that is available. There's also the stop port on which the service listens for the kill signal when the stop script is launched. You can change that as well. Let's now take a look at another important configuration that is available and is found in the configuration files of the web application itself. So we navigate to the JRIO web app inside the webinf folder where several configuration files are to be found. One of them is application context repository. And this one is used to connect the service to the repository folder that I just showed. We can see that in the first beam configured in this configuration file, where we are dealing with a repository that is file-based and points to a folder that is relative to the location of the web application itself. So we're using a so-called web app relative repository implementation in which the path towards the repository folder is relative to where the web application is found. This is useful because no matter where you extract your zip, this configuration will remain valid as we point to the internal repository within the zip using a relative path. But there are other ways to point or configure to a repository. And one of them can be found in another example file in the Docker folder here we have a, an example of repository configuration that uses a simple file-based repository to which we point to using an absolute path. The, the class of the repository implementation is different. It's called file system repository as opposed to the one we've seen in the other file. With Jasper Reports I.O., we can configure multiple repository. So I can copy this repository configuration from this uh, file and add it to the one that was using the internal repository. So I can have as many repositories as I want. What's important to know here is that the order in which we declare the repositories is important. Um, if we have the same, the repositories are searched in order, in, in the order in which they are declared. If I have the same resource in two rep or more repositories, the resource will be delivered from the first repository that has it, considering the order in which the repositories have been declared in the configuration file. Commented out, in the default configuration, we can find an Amazon S3 based repository. We can have GRXMLs and the resources that make up our reports uploaded to S3 buckets in the cloud. And we can use the name of the bucket, the region, and maybe the credential if the bucket is not public, public to connect to that bucket and use it as a repository. In addition to the name of the bucket, we can also specify a, a subfolder within the bucket in case the root of the repository for JRIO 
is not the same as the root of the bucket itself. Probably the bucket contains some other unrelated resources that we want to exclude. So we can point to a subfolder. Now, let's open, let's start the service. I'm going to use the start script to start it on this machine. So I'm going to the demos folder where I extracted the zip. Yes, let's change the folder. I'm going into the extracted distribution and I can see the start script and I launch it. We, we see it starts in about four seconds on this particular machine. So it's a very lightweight service. Now let's open the browser. And I remind you that the Jasper Reports IO service doesn't have a UI of its own. We're supposed to make direct REST calls to the service and capture the output programmatically. But we ship that demo application that I mentioned and we can find it on localhost port 8080. We will be redirected to GRIO docs. Remember the folder we've seen in the zip distro. This is the demo application which comes with a quick start guide explaining some of the configuration I already talked about. It also documents the REST API that people would normally use to make REST calls to the service and have reports and data visualization produced. It also comes with a few examples which show how to use the JavaScript API to embed reports into web applications and keep their interactivity intact. And of course, it demonstrates the reporting library capabilities by showcasing some of the output capabilities. Let's look at some of the re sample reports here. I clicked on the orders report because it's the first report that we're running. It's a bit slower because the application just got loaded. But subsequent calls are much faster. And actually any other report I'm going to call is faster. What we can see here is that we can interact with the reports. I'm clicking on the country column and I'm able to sort by country this cross tab. This is what we see here is a so-called interactive report viewer, which allows me to zoom in, zoom out, undo my changes in case I have already interacted with the report. And in the case of a report with multiple pages like this one, which has 37 pages, I can move from one page to another. It also allows me to export this report to PDF and other formats. We see here the PDF and we can have the same report in Excel format or any other of the supported formats. People can use this viewer as is, embed it into their own application, or can use the JavaScript API to make a more finer grain type of embedding in which the report is controlled through co custom code that leverages our JavaScript API. Viewing reports in interactive mode, as we've seen moments ago, is just one way of consuming reports. The main goal when creating Jasper Reports IO was to provide a REST API for generating reports programmatically. And this can be done using direct REST calls to the GRIO application. Let's see one of these examples. I'm making a REST API call to have a report delivered in PDF format. So I'm calling the GRIO application and I know that the REST calls start with the REST v2 prefix. I'm interested in generating the reports 
So I type in reports, and then after these tokens, I'm supposed to give the path within the repository for the report I'm looking for. And I'm looking for a report that was under the folder called samples reports. And the main report template, the main GRXML, was called orders table. Now I want this report in PDF format. I also happen to know that this report accepts a couple of parameters. One is city used as filter, so let's filter orders only for Paris. And the second parameter, a numeric parameter, is fright, used for conditional formatting, and let's give it the value 9. When I hit enter, the REST API call will deliver a PDF back to me in which I can see the filter was Paris and the threshold for coloring these arrows was 9. So what we've seen here in this video was the contents of the zip distribution that we offer for download for Jasper Reports IO Professional Edition. We took a look at some of the basic configurations that can be made to tailor the service to your needs, like giving it more memory, changing the port, pointing to a different repository. We then took a look at how we can use the demo application to view reports, either in interactive mode or to have them exported to PDF, Excel, and other formats. And we also took a look at how to use the REST API to generate reports with direct API calls. Mm -hmm.